February 2nd, 1917. Dear Ned, I finally arrived back in France from the African front. After my experience there, I've decided that whatever I can do to stop this war is all that matters now. To this end, my friend Remy and I have joined the Belgian Intelligence Corps. They're training us in the techniques of military espionage, wiretapping, code breaking, and photographic analysis. The classroom work is dull, but after the carnage of the trenches in Africa, it is welcome relief. However, we found that Belgian intelligence is badly organized and ineffective when compared to the intelligence services of the British or the French. In fact, the whole program is considered a joke, and no one takes it seriously. Sometimes it seems like I'm back in high school. Our time is wasted here. The slaughter continues on the Western Front with no end in sight. And I now feel that I must take desperate measure to get into the action. I've got to find a way to transfer to the French. Take care, Indy. You should have stuck with me last night. That bar has improved since basic training. What's this? I forged this from the French army, requesting that we join them. I forged this from the Belgians, requesting that we join the French. Where did you get these papers? Well, I lifted them from the French operations office. The same place that I got these. Uh, Remy, Remy. All I need you to do is deliver them. What if they find out? We'll be put in jail? No, no, Remy, they won't. My spying techniques are incredible. It's too risky. Remy, this is why we're here. Don't you remember what Dr. Schweitzer said? Good is that which promotes life. Evil is that which destroys it. If we go to jail, we won't be promoting anything. If we can become real spies, Maybe we could do something to stop the fighting. This will never work. This will never work. Captain Defense? Yes, sir. Captain McGuire? Yes, sir. Welcome to the French Secret Service. Please sit. I am impressed with you, gentlemen. Your records with the Belgian Army are outstanding. Especially the forged signature on this letter of transfer. <laughs> we can use men like you. No. I just have a few questions before we assign you. But Juan, can you cook? Oh, yes, I'm a good cook. Captain Defense? I can boil an egg. Do you have any knowledge of airplanes? Uh, no. I, yes, sir. Yes, um, I've flown several times. Good. Now, you'll both wait here. I will take this to my commander, and we will get you your assignment. I'm telling the truth. Cooking? You're gonna end up housekeeping, not spying. Well, why did you say you could fly? You hate flying. I think you gentlemen please sit. But then you're going home. I am? Are you familiar with the Cafe Noir in Brussels? Yes. You are its new proprietor. All our spies will report to you. You will be our main contact with the White Lady, which is the code name for the Belgian underground. You're trusting us with that? No, no, that is Bedouin's assignment. As for you, Defense, we're not sure where to place you as yet. But for the time being, we'll send you back to the Western Front. 
photographic reconnaissance. It will only be for two weeks, Captain, until we can place you where your talents can be fully employed. Edouard, come with me. I want you to meet someone who will brief you on your assignment. So, what do you think? Albert is my new name. See, I have the papers. Captain Defense, it's time to go. I gotta go. Do you think we shall see each other again? I don't know. I don't want to say goodbye, but I will say thank you. I'm just gonna be looking at photos all day. You're the one that's landed on his feet. Behind enemy lines, helping the resistance. Thanks to you. Yeah. Well, take care of yourself, Remy. Indeed. Go on. Go. Go. Captain? 124th Squadron at Ravenel. Yeah, the American squadron. American? America's not in the war. It's American volunteers fighting for France. French put them all in one flying unit along with a bunch of old aeroplanes. You a pilot? No. No, a photographer. Yeah, flying's insane, let alone in wartime with a gang of rowdy American cowboys. I'll take the trenches, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's our squadron mascot. He's just uh, saying hello. Hello, Whiskey. Uh, Captain DeFoss reporting for duty. I'm Raoul Loofberry. I'm uh, looking for the photographic division. Follow me. So you're the replacement. Replacement? Yes. The last man's gear is over there. Cameras, plates, everything you need. Your airplane arrived this morning. Sir, you, you said the airplane? Yeah, a new SOP with two seater. We got a good pilot with her. Lieutenant Green. I thought I was supposed to be analyzing photos, not, not taking them. <laughs> Heck no. That happens back at HQ. You take them. You mean that I have to fly? No. We fly, you snack. Sir, there must be some kind of mistake. There's no mistake. You like mushrooms? I hate mushrooms. Kobe, Len, here's the replacement. Then Hunt! His name's Defense. Captain Defense. And he's American, too. Do I know you? Hopi Baker? It's me, Indiana Jones. Professor Jones's son? That's right. I don't believe this, guys. This captain we've been sent is the same little punk that used to run errands for me back in college. That's right. It's, it's, it's great to see you. I think I'm gonna cry. 
Captain Defense is our replacement reconnaissance photographer. Captain Defense, this is your pilot, Lieutenant Harold Green. Hiya. Hi. It's really only for two weeks, though, then I'm going to be reassigned. <laughs> What's so funny? Well, you see, the longest any reconnaissance guy ever lasted with us is eight days. Why is that? Well, you're flying low and slow, and you got a camera in your hand when what you need is a gun. Hey, Doc Breath, give him a break. The kid ought to know, right? No, that's all right. So, eight days, huh? But Harold is good. You'll be okay with him. Yeah. we got. Looks like a walking accident. <laughs> Sorry I interrupted your little photographic session, but I've just downed what I think was Rick Duffin's brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you just couldn't resist getting in on the picture. <laughs> I know. Come on, sir. No. The picture first. <laughs> okay, smile. General Nivelle needs pictures of a reported arms buildup at the railroad yard in Ham. That's here. It's about 40 kilometers behind the lines. Lieutenant Green, you will take the new SOP with and photograph the site with Captain Defense. Carl and Hobie, you will fly escort for them. The rest of us will be making a diversionary patrol over Sector 2. Take off in 15 minutes. That's all, gentlemen. Good luck. Hope you make it, kid.
What are you, crazy? Our lives depend on it, kid! I can't land the plane if the wheels are damaged! Okay, okay, I'll do it! I shot it down. They've landed it and we capture them trying to escape. They are our prisoners. Look at the engine. I shot it to pieces and that is why it landed. They are my prisoners. Stop that looting! This prize belongs to Rittmeister von Richthofen. Well, what do you know? Baron Manfred von Richthofen. Reconnaissance, huh? Lafayette Escadrille. Lafayette Escadrille. Yeah. I should have known you by your tactics. Under the sun. Swift and sudden from behind. Take him to the field hospital. See that he gets immediate medical attention. So long, Indy. Welcome to Germany. 
I have never bagged an American before. It would be an honor to have you as my luncheon guest at my aerodrome. It is only 15 kilometers from here. As a boy, I always wanted to be a cowboy. My mother will enjoy this little souvenir of the American Wild West. Back. What happened? Well, we saw them die from the line. The way back should have been clear. I'd like to go back and take a look. Uh, I can dodge in and out of there again. Okay, take my plane. It's ready to go. Why are you fighting, Herr Rittmeister? My brother, Baron von Richthofen, is a hunter, Captain. He has spent his whole life stalking prey with a gun. If there were no enemy in the air today, he would be out hunting wild boar. <laughs> Acuring. The newspapers have defined us as medieval knights. Plunging into battle with these flying machines as our handsome steeds, adorned with colorful scarves like feathered plumes. I'm surprised you don't paint your planes bright red. Quite. This Nungesser, Monsieur Skull and Crossbones, you know him? He landed at Aerodrome this morning. Ah, so he is back from his injuries. We suspected he tried to down my brothers this morning, but Lotte here managed to flutter home. His tail feathers are a little ruffled, however. <laughs> Sergeant, paper. As Lotte's older brother, I feel obliged to avenge Monsieur Nungesser's attempt on his life. I, Baron von Riethofen, challenge old skull and crossbones to a duel alone. Tomorrow at dawn. Who will volunteer to drop this message on the Lafayette Escadrille Aerodrome? I will be honored to carry this message, Manfred. And now I would like to propose a toast. To victory! Anthony Falker has arrived in the field. Ah, excellent. Well, Captain, so is your ride? It's over for you. Interment for the rest of the war. Goodbye. Thanks. Sergeant. Yes? I want you to paint my albatross red. Uh, uh, Red, your plane will be visible for miles. You cannot hide. It's too bold. I do not need to hide from anyone. We are bold, and we will let them know it. Just paint it.
Shut down. Green was captured. Turn plane under the field! How do you know? I had lunch with him. You what? It's a challenge to a duel. One on one with Nunga, sir. He's right. It's a challenge to a duel over the castle at Saint Quentin tomorrow at dawn. Tomorrow at dawn? But, but Charles has already gone to Paris. Well, then we better go get him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we can dare and we can do united men and brothers too. The gallant puts the two and change our country's glory. Our hearts are stopped and God has sing. For soon to stone for when to sing. So there we go again, the name of Gary Oni's glory. How do you know he's here? That's Charles's car. It's a German staff car. It's his prized possession. Figures. Well, well. I seem to have finally got rid of him where I want him. Are you going alone? Of course. We may be at war, but we are still gentlemen. He shall be alone, and so shall I. But perhaps De France will join me and take some photos of my victory. Oh, no, no, I, I... You brought the challenge. Then it's settled. Now, drink, Captain. To the defeat of Richtofen.
fighting. They're taking up on Charles. Shut up. Did she ripped off and go down? Not exactly. But he was hit. You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I, I just hope Nungusen makes it. There. There. You did it, Indy. The Red Baron going down. Wow. Charles! Captain Defense. Hey, we thought you were dead. Just another one of my bumpy landings in no man's land. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, sir. Look. Bravo! Richthofen is going to be furious when he sees what the press make of this, eh? <laughs> I thought you got him. No confirmation. We think he made it back. But it was a good fight, eh? Let's hope Richthofen doesn't find out who took this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky it was only a small leak and the fire did not spread. Yes, the old albatross brought me home again. We have been through much together, but I do look forward to this new plan. Volker, you have outdone yourself. This time you have created an unrivaled gun platform with wings. This plane can twist and turn like a hornet. Climb faster than anything you've had before. I must get back to Paris before they find out I have been flying. You will have to continue fighting without me. What are my chances? I have every reason to believe you will make it, Indy. In fact, I am so sure, I promise you, I will be back here with champagne when your assignment is up and drive you back to Paris myself. Thanks. Thank you. We have that ripped off in a blow we will never forget. Au revoir. Au revoir. Look, flying cameraman there to record the kill so all can see, like this Belgian captain with Nungesa. Do not worry yourself, Lothar. I will make it a priority to deny them the pleasure of filming my death. I believe the heart of the matter is very simple. To shoot down the cameraman first. <laughs> the young aviator lay dying And as neath the wreckage he lay to the mechanics around him, these parting words he did say. Two bell swings you'll find in my stomach, three spark plugs are safe in my lung. The prop is in splitters inside me, to my fingers the joystick has clung. Oh, 
take the crankshaft and assemble the engine again. Intelligence has reported a new German airfield somewhere in this area, closer to our lines than ever before. They believe it to be the home base of those large night bombers that have been raiding Paris. Photographs of this area may reveal that they are there. We'll do our best to draw enemy fire, Captain. But there's no denying that this will be a dangerous mission indeed. I'm sorry it comes on your last day here. Seems like that's always the way it is.
Wilson declared war on Germany this morning. America's in the war. No kidding. This squadron will probably be turned over to the U.S. Army. Well, I'll be getting some of the best fighting men I know. You guys really took care of me. I just hope I never have to fly again. <laughs> yeah. Ready, Captain? I haven't got all night. Coming. Mes amis. Au revoir. At least he's out of danger. <laughs> What's the rush? They've given me a special assignment. Very hush hush. I have to report at 1200 hours. Goodbye, Charles. It's, it's been an experience. Au revoir. Ah, yes. Captain Defense. You did very well on your first assignment. Please sit. You have heard of Anthony Fokker? The German aircraft designer, yes, sir. He designed the Fokker DR-1 triplane. And he also invented a machine gun designed to shoot through the blades of a propeller. You are right, except in one important particular. Monsieur Fokker is not German, he is Dutch. Since Holland is neutral, he could have chosen to work for the Allies or for the Germans. Unfortunately, he chose the Germans. Your mission is to contact Fokker and persuade him to defect to us. If he accepts, tell him that another agent will get to him and make arrangements to get him out of Germany. The British have already offered him two million pounds to work for them. We are offering him even more. Good luck. Report to room 13B, and they will brief you. Thank you, sir. I'm Captain DeVos. Come inside. Come inside. Don't give your name. Don't ever give your name. We are expecting a Captain D. Yeah, that, that, that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm Captain D. Ah, good. We have your papers here. Koval G, you have the papers for Captain D? Please sit down, Captain D. Your name is Fritz Diefenbacher. You're the manager of a small dye factory outside Berlin. These are your travel papers to Hanover. Hanover? And the address of the firm that makes naval uniforms. This is your certificate of exemption from German military service because of defective eyesight. Right, right. If you'd sign those documents, please. Those are your documents, Captain D. Uh, what do I do now? Go to room 13C. Hi, 
I'm Captain D. Oh, Captain Defense, come in. Your mission is very interesting, and we have been working very hard for you. Captain Defense, gentlemen. First, here is your suit. My suit? Don't worry, it is your size. It will fit you, but not too well. Show him the pocket. A map of Hanover, and one of the countryside between Dusseldorf and Hanover. Also, secret pockets in here, in here, and in here. And the shoes? Oh, shoes. In the right shoe, slide back to here. Lens, film, and satin. So I... With these materials and a box with a hole in it, you can make a camera. Oh, right, right. I remember that. We were not told that you would need one, but we thought we had better make sure. <laughs> so, is there anything in the left shoe? No. Of course. Put it on. Stomp and twist with the heel. Knife. <laughs> Great. Uh, Francois, the bagger. Um. <laughs> um. It is a fitted suitcase, hmm? A brush, razor, hair oil. Oh, I, I, I never use hair oil. I, it is not hair oil. It is invisible ink. <laughs> right. Don't forget the spectacles. Spectacles. Your suit. You must wear these to maintain your disguise from the Germans. And you must use them for reading. Yes, yeah. suitcase. Mm -hmm. And the shoes. Let me know how the knife works. We haven't tried that one before. Right. So, is there anything else? I don't think so. A secret pocket for the document, naturally. But they'll tell you about that in room 13A. 13A. Voila! <laughs> Captain Henry Defense? Yes, sir. Captain, please sit down. Anthony Foker usually works at his aircraft factory near Berlin. It is impossible to reach him there because he's closely watched at all times. We have discovered that he's shortly to begin a journey to the naval base at Alhorn. Some sort of official inspection tour. Alhorn is heavily guarded. We will never get you in there. However, along the way, tomorrow night, Foker will be staying at a hotel in Hanover for one night. It will be our only opportunity to reach him. So I'll... So, you will leave for Hanover tonight? Arrive in there at dawn. Find the Hotel Franz Tutor. There you will contact the hall porter, Max. Your password throughout will be... It's a long way from Le Havre. The reply being, you are Captain D. Yes, sir. Do not be late. You must give this letter to Max. It contains our proposals to Foker. Max must deliver it to him tomorrow at 6 p.m. when he is dressing for dinner. You will stand by and wait for a reply. Hopefully, he will meet you to discuss his terms. I'll be there. Here is the letter. Place it in the secret pocket and guard it with your life. Yes, sir. Because we don't really mind if the Germans find it. They know we are trying to bribe Foker. Of course, if they do find it, they will shoot you. Here are your travel instructions. Leave immediately. Take bus 127 southeast out of Paris. After about two hours, you will get off at the end of Moulin Roulet, the last stop before entering the military zone behind the front. From the crossroads, 
go north. Walk two miles until you reach a signpost for Le Havre. Beyond will be a group of ruined buildings. Turn on the path and go to the old farmhouse. There you will find Maurice. He will get you into Germany. Hi. I was sent by the travel agent to inquire about Maurice. It's a long way from... Yes, that's coming. You are late. This is not the kind of operation you could be late for. It is vital you take off at sunset. You take off? What do, you, what do you mean, fly? I wasn't supposed to have to fly again. How do you think you will get into Germany? Well, by train. No, we fly you in. I really don't much like flying. Don't worry. There's the best pilot in France and the safest. He's been on dozens of missions and always returned. Captain D, I should have realized. Charles? Indy, we will have one last adventure together. Not the last, I hope. But have no fear. I am more than a match for all the guns of Germany. I will deliver you safely to your destination and get you back again. Charles, has, has this ever been done before? Well, not exactly in this manner, but we will succeed. Whether it's flying or spying, one must always be willing to improvise. To just take what you've been given, add some imagination to it, and just charge ahead. <laughs> Full throttle. And no brakes. It's getting dark. We'd better get the plane out. A parachute? What's it for? Didn't they tell you? Paris are spies are dropping on enemy lines. What? You jump out of the airplane with it. I'm not gonna... It's the latest experimental model. Small enough to wear on your back. No, just climb aboard and sit down. I've got a bad feeling about this.
Tiro. Herr Sinzi, was tun Sie hier? Ich heiße Frisch Diefenbacher. Ich bin ein Geschaßen. Zeigen Sie mir Ihre Papiere. Ah, ja, ja, ja. Help you. Are you Max? Yes. Do you have a reservation? It's a, it's a long way from the Hav. You are Captain D. Is Foker still here? Yes, but. Uh, there's been a change in schedule. He's leaving. Yes. See if you can delay him. I'll get the letter. All right. Excuse me, mein Herr Fokker. <clears throat> There's a gentleman wishes to have a word with you. He said something about unfinished business. What? Where is he? Herr Fokker, will you hurry, please? We will miss the train. Yes, yes, coming. Thank you, Max. Thank you very much. Where are they going? To catch the train to Alhol. Well, where's the station? Maybe I can catch you before the train leaves. Well, you could, but I doubt you'll be able to speak with him. They watch him very closely. Then I'll get on the train. I can stop when he goes to the laboratory. But wait. What? That you can borrow my bicycle. Right. And there is a shortcut to the station. Listen, go to the Krupstein ruins. Look for a Charles Nungerson. He'll be by a biplane. Uh, what do I do if you don't show up tonight? Improvise. Right, uh, one ticket to Alhorn. You must come to the ticket office. You wait. You have to have a ticket.
do it. I'm sorry, Admiral Werner, but I must disagree with you. In my opinion, the day of the Zeppelin is over. Yeah, yeah, they are too slow. They're much too vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire. For bombing enemy cities, perhaps. Ah, Stuart, schnapps, three schnapps. The secret of bombing enemy cities is high altitude bombing. And that can only be carried out by aircrafts that can fly in, drop their bombs, and then swiftly retire. There are some very interesting new developments that we would like you to see at Al Hall. We would be honored to have your involvement in some of our more challenging design problems. to know Willy Hartforsman. That's sweet, of course. He's a maniac. Or a genius? Yes, yes, one of those so-called geniuses who is always inventing crazy things. The shell-proof tank, a one-man submarine. Ah, you wait till you see his latest invention. It'll change your mind, I think. And the course of the war. So what is this secret weapon? So sorry, but I cannot tell you that. You must wait till you see it for yourself at Al Horn. I hope it is worth the journey. The North Sea is always so cold this time of year. I'm Airfocus Valet, Fritz Diefenbach. I was told to ride with you. Nobody told me. What? All right, get in. How long will it take him to get there? He's there by now. If he can somehow meet with Fokker, he could be here by nightfall. Well, it better be. Improviser or not. I have to get out of here tonight. There's too much risk waiting out here in the open. <laughs> and not so much as where Captain B is going. This is Fritz Diefenbaker. He is with them. Your papers, please. Ah, of course. There you are. All right. But you should have a pass. Certainly, I'll tell the general.
Which of these bags are mine to focus? Here we are. Focus room six. Upstairs. My dear Falker, I'm Captain D. Did you get my note? What are you doing here? I told him I was your valet. Come inside. You were supposed to meet me in Hanover. I know, I know. I ran into some trouble. Since you are my valet, kindly put my case upon the bed. I've got a letter for you. I think you know the subject. I hope the French have a better idea of my worth than the British. That's General von Kramer. Hide, quickly. Don't let them see I you. I was told now. to wait for a reply. Ah, there you are. We were afraid you had given us the slip. Now I believe you have not yet met our Swedish friend, uh, Willehard Forsman. Uh, Forsman, uh, this is mine here, Anthony Fokker. Honored, I am sure. I understand you have a surprise for me today. I cannot wait to be amused. Amused? I am not here to entertain, Herr Volker. There are others in Germany who have ideas about flying, too. Perhaps. But I have seen very little outside my factory that I would encourage Germany to invest in. You are only versed in the design of small pursuit aeroplanes. My machine is in an entirely different class. Well, indeed. We have chosen Al Horn as the base for his new machine, because here we can keep it far from the view of the enemy. When can I see it? Uh, the aircraft will be arriving at the airfield at 4 o'clock. Unfortunately, a storm has delayed its departure from Polm. But as I understand it, the, the weather is clearing now, so... There are drinks uh, and refreshments downstairs, and we have arranged a special tour of the hydrogen factory. Shall we go? I think our tame lions do not much like each other. <laughs> you wait till Fokker sees the pole, Giles. Then the fur will really fly. <laughs> Franz Joseph Hotel, Hanover, Germany. Kindly reserve a room for me on the night of April 7th. Yours faithfully, Fritz Stiefenbach. From Alhorn Naval Base. I've delivered the letter and await response. There's a secret weapon at the base and I hope to report further on this. But if I fail, if I fail, further inquiries should be made. Captain D. Excuse me. I've got a letter I need to post for mine here, Fokker, but I don't have a stamp. Do you know Give what? it to me. I'll put it with the officer's letters. Great. Thank you. Now this is, uh, this is where we break down the water to extract the hydrogen for the Zeppelin fleet. And over here, we are working on a new process to refine helium. If we can perfect the method, we will eliminate the explosive dangers of hydrogen. So this is not the place for you to light up one of your big fat cigars, Herr Fokker. <laughs>
Ryder Green? Uh, I'm here with mine here, Foker, the aircraft designer. He, he gave me permission to look around. I suggest you go back to your room. Right. Thanks. I'm not interested. May I ask why, sir? Of course. The French have offered me hardly more money than the British. If they had doubled their offer, I might have considered it. But, as it is, Besides, the facilities for my work would not nearly be as good in France as they are in Germany. Yes, but you're working for the Hun, the warmongers. You're making machines that kill. Oh, come now, Captain. What am I to call you, Captain D? You have come here to encourage me to put my genius to work for France instead of Germany. But you still want me to make machines that kill. You do not want me to make Christmas decorations. But certainly it means something to you whether your work is put to the use of good or evil. The Germans think they represent the good and the French are evil. I'm a scientist, not a philosopher. Yes, sir, but for the sake of humanity, don't you think... Oh, humanity. Wars come and go. Humanity suffers, but knowledge and science survive. I will tell you something else. Governments spend millions on research for machines of war when they will not pay a penny for medical research in times of peace. So, science thrives in times of war. And in the end, when the war is over, it is very often humanity that benefits. You must go. We are going to see Forsman's invention in half an hour. Take your suitcase and go. And for God's sake, don't get caught. Greetings, Herr Admiral. General von Kramer. What are you doing here? I was wounded last week, and I'm on leave to recover. Nothing so serious. We invited him to see Forsman's latest invention. Naturally, we wanted the opinion of 
Germany's greatest pilot as well. Great occasion, sir. Absolutely. Do I know you? Uh, I came with Admiral Werner, sir. Oh, of course. Uh, I'm afraid I... Well, you couldn't be expected to remember us all, sir. No, no, quite so. Such a large party. Are those Dutch cigars you have there? Uh, Yes, sir. Mr. Fokker was kind enough to give them to me. Don't forget, we're not allowed to smoke them in the restricted area or that hydrogen, you know. Oh, no, sir. Of course not. But I do particularly like Dutch cigars. I wonder if I might rob you of two or three. Absolutely. Here you are. Thank you. Much obliged. <laughs> not at all. Already we have six of these beautiful monsters here beside the North Sea. And I have great plans for them in the future. The British fleet will soon discover. Hey, Captain. <laughs> yes, indeed, Admiral. Do you know, the first plane with the tubular frame that I ever built was in a Zeppelin hangar in Baden-Baden. And is the story true about the synchronized machine gun and the windmill? I remembered, as a boy, throwing stones between the sails of a windmill. An inspiration but a very practical one. Genius is not enough, Forceman. One must be practical as well. You think that I am not? I'm about to discover. Second plywood layer. With ten engines in that weak span, there is no problem. Possibly. Let me work on it. I will make it fly twice as far.
General, will you really drop bombs on New York? Oh, yeah, yeah. First of all, we will drop leaflets. But to persuade them to withdraw from a war they should never have entered in the first place. Hold up there! Stop that man! That's not one of our officers! Oh, stop him! I shot that man down! That's fucking himmel! Now I'll lose the moonlight, and then who knows where I'll end up. Come on, spin the prop like I showed you. Mission accomplished. Full throttle. No brakes. <laughs> Boom! Tell me about it. I'm a moonlit rider.